Okay. He's not on the board. He's no, he's not on the board. He's committed. He's committed. He's committed. So Jerry McLaughlin is the superintendent, and you have Dan Eggery, who's the business manager. So Jerry was the business manager, and in all honesty, Mark, I thought when they promoted him superintendent, I mean, it was, a, it was an odd move for a school district because typically right. that would never happen. And I thought, well, okay, they're looking for a guy to be a little more conservative, a little, and a little more fiscally responsible. Um, a person as a taxpayer, and I, and I like Jerry, don't get me wrong, but as a taxpayer, I can see where, where he's been that person. I almost think that he feels slightly inferior because he doesn't have an education background that he's afraid to challenge him. Right. So, it, it'll be interesting to see what this board does with him and what they do with him. And, Okay, good morning, everyone. We ask you to please rise for the opening prayer and pledge of allegiance before we convene the commissioner's public meeting. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, our hearts are full of thanks this morning. We know that you're the creator and author over us. We give you thanks this week for the monies we receive for the levy system and the positive news on the airport. We thank all those who have worked diligently to work those positive news on two very significant items. 
that are vital to growth in our area. And we ask for your guidance and direction as we realize these are only the initial steps in the overall process. Lord, this past Tuesday was National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Fine men and women of law enforcement protect the line between good and evil. We thank you for their enormous sacrifice and service they provide daily. We're thankful for their families who have also experienced the sacrifice of that oath. We ask you to provide safety and protection to them as they protect our communities. May we take the time to thank them for their service. Next Monday, we'll recognize and celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And on this day and throughout the year, may we encourage each other to volunteer and help their communities to promote equal rights for every American. We pray for all racism to cease. We know that you create us in your image, and your love sees no color. We are all equal in your eyes, and that is the measure of your love. So this morning we think of your words, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Our law enforcement who serve to keep the peace, and Dr. King who dedicated his life for equality and peace, are examples of your words. May we honor and follow the example you set likewise. These things we humbly place before you this day. Amen. Good morning. At this time, we'll convene the commissioner's public meeting and ask for the approval of minutes of the previous meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So here. Do we have public comments on agenda items only at this time from the audience? Hearing none, any online? No, no, no. Okay, then we'll move on to reports. Good morning, Kalen. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm obviously not Kalen. She called in sick today, so I think I'll win. And we hope she feels better. Yeah. Um, she said, well, won't do so. <laughs> um, presented for your ratification are the invoices due through January 17, 2024, to be paid on January 10th in the amount of $2,904,059.80. The breakdown is as follows. General fund, $1,236,416.27. Which is 42.58% of the total. The grants, ARPA grants, 250,000, which is 8.61%. No Act 13 grants. Other grants, including $500,000 to children and youth as a pass through, the total is $503,204.21, which equals 17.33%. RMS $835,097, which is 28.77%, and escrows of $78,954.35, so of 2.72%. Or 2 okay, any. The ARPA item was uh, to tie dot and value municipal authority. Uh, $250,000 went up to for a car purchase for their authority. Yeah. And then the escrow account um, was children and youth, uh, guardian, and uh, our county health plan for the escrow account. Okay, uh, motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, any other comments or questions? Should I say, since we have the absent of Jason and, and Commissioner Maravito, that the RMS money is all <laughs> covered by RMS? If you'd like to adopt that rule. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to adopt that rule. I'll just I'd say it for the first time only. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So noted. Okay, the motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, moving on to personnel. <coughs> Commissioner seeking the approval of the following personnel actions as conditional offers, offers of employment subject to the successful completion of a background check and all other employment conditions as outlined in attachment A. 
um, Human Resources Office, Al Allison Wolf, Temporary Human Resources Business Partner, Part Time, New Position, forty dollars per hour, not to exceed one thousand hours in a year, effective date uh, seven January two thousand twenty. I have a motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, do just to clarify the way the county works as opposed to what we used to, do we make the motion first then have to make a second? Discussion? We'll have, have to discussion. Okay. Okay. So, I have a second. Uh, so I'll, I'll make a second. Okay. Comments, sir? Uh, I, I just, I was I was a little taken back on, on the $40 an hour, to be honest with you, to start. Um, did a little personal investigation. You and I had a, a conversation as well. Um, I think it's important to know that probably if we had to take this out, and unfortunately we're in a very difficult position with our HR department right now where we're losing two people. Um, we got to replace two people. And I think um, keeping a, a, a I, I struggled all the way around with keeping a, an employee that was leaving on temporarily, but I think the, the value it brings is some knowledge to the department until we get this replaced. And I think if we had to go out to an outside source, you know, whether you use like, you know, uh, a temporary company, it would cost us more than the forty dollars an hour. So I, I was a little concerned about the forty. I, I understand the reason behind it, so I just wanted to clarify that okay. with, with my my reasoning. Yeah, I understand your comments. So it still is within her pay grade. Why why she would have said oh, okay. And she yeah, also okay. That position currently as the full time is in the thirty six dollar mm -hmm. change amount. Right. So it's within her pay range. But I, I, I hear your concerns. Um she she was the deputy, uh, she's willing to continue to assist um, running the department fully uh, without the HR director being there and her being there, she would be uh, helping us uh, remotely and um, until we get two new people in position, but it'd it be, um, we're not gonna miss a step by having her still here right. part-time uh, while we search for those two people. She'll be the go-to person for HR. Uh, she'll be guiding the HR ship until we have those two, two replacements in place. Um, if we do outsource it, we're probably looking at double. Um, and they would come in with no knowledge. Right. And uh, so it's, it's vital that we keep her in that role uh, until we have those two in place so she can continue the daily operations of the office. And can I clarify that she is going to be 100% remote so she'll have no interaction physically in the in the department or she will have some? It's going to be a combo. Okay. okay. Um, and we'll have a layout from our director I'm assuming of, of the duties we want her to perform Yes. Yeah. as a temporary employee. Okay. Yeah. Plus by being part time the benefits are no longer Any comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 So carried. And we want to thank uh, Allie for staying aboard to help us guide the ship. Kind of reminds me of a situation where we had um, a gentleman that took another job. Um, he was in buildings and, and facilities. Um, and they were in the middle of the assortment project up on like Midford Road. Um, he was in the middle of the project and, and he volunteered to come back part time um, to complete his part of the project. Um, he came back an hour, which is a little bit more, uh, but at the same time, he had the knowledge of the project, he had the expertise, and um, if we looked into outsourcing it, we were finding out $70 to $90 per hour if we went out and bring that person in and start him all over on the project. And we, we were very thankful that, that he cared enough to want to finish that, and uh, he did finish the job and did a great job for us. And, and we saved uh, a ton of money because yeah. he hooked us up for the, the general service into the facility, use our electric. Yeah. So we compare this similar situation where now he has the knowledge, he's going to continue the daily operations, keep the office running until we get the two new people in place. So we want to thank her for, for her uh, for dedication to the county in that aspect, and we wish her well in her new employment. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you hate to lose somebody, but I, I, I've always been very, in, in my previous roles, um, you, you cannot hinder somebody that has the ability to better their lives. Absolutely. 
it's, it's never a negative when somebody leaves their position. Uh, obviously, it makes it a struggle for us to, to replace them. Unfortunately for us right now, the HR side is tough where, where we've lost two back to back. So. Thank you. So, all fair side? Uh, I, I think we did it. No, 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 so, carried. And at this time, we'll recess the commission's public meeting for the salary board and we'll convene the salary board at this time. All right, salary board seeking your approval to. Uh, seeking your approval on. Appointing the following individuals to the salary board: uh, Scott Metzger, Chairman, Commissioner, Chairman, and Chairman of the Salary Board, and Krista Rogers, Controller, as Secretary of the Salary Board. Okay, we have a motion. I'll make a motion. One second. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all your side. Aye. 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 So carried. Okay, 4.3. I believe we're going to table this. Yes, Commissioner, seeking your approval to table 4.3. We have a little bit of work to do. Okay. Do we need a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion to table it. Okay. I'll second. All fair side? Aye. 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 So, period, and then Krista, we'll wait for you to get to us with what exactly is needed. Um, I'll send an email out so we can make a plan to move forward with meetings and I need to get minutes from the commissioner's office to put together and I'll maintain them in our safe in the office. Great. If that's all right. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. This time we'll adjourn the salary board and we can meet the commissioner's public meeting. sell 6.8 million uh, we, we, we're matching the grant so we're we're applying for this grant and is this a state or a federal it'd be a state. state that's a state mm -hmm. grant okay. yeah so 3.4 is actually what we're submitting for but we have to show the 50% right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. thank you uh -huh. you're welcome okay um, all fair side aye. 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 aye so carried thank you yep and the last item I have for you <coughs> is vote to approve the list of agreements approved by the director of administration that's for the month of December of 2023 and there were three agreements for the new commissioners these are all uh, contracts that I approved that are uh, below ten thousand dollars they're all typical um, reoccurring contracts for uh, 
professional services such as uh, solicitors, conflict attorneys, interpreters, things of that nature. And not the solicitor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I have a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All their side. Aye. Aye. So carry. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Jim. <coughs> Good morning, commissioners. Um, as you know, we had uh, some of you We had bid out the cross pipe uh, minimally acceptable cross pipes for Williamsport levy system back in December. Um, we received, um, unfortunately, we only received one bid, and it was um, far exceeding what we originally um, thought it would be. Uh, we were anticipating between four and five million dollars, and the bid we received was eleven point, almost eight million dollars. Um, so what we are going to do is there were a number of items in this this bid that, uh, due to not having as much information about the actual pipe, we were we were making certain engineering assumptions. So what our consultant did was they're going through the bid to determine. Um, Based upon hopefully some newer information the city is going to be providing us with, um, we have the videos, but we didn't have the engineering analysis. So hopefully, once we acquire that engineering analysis, we'll be able to actually uh, make the bid a little bit tighter. Um, we'll also be uh, looking at certain types that were were optional, uh, dropping them off of the bid so that we can get a bid that is more consistent with the amount of funding we have available for, with the EDA grant that we have with this project. So we're recommending that this bid re, re, be rejected and we will rebid with hopefully within the next couple months. Uh, we have informed EDA, they did understand and they were in support of us rejecting the bid. Okay, a motion. Um, can I, so, a motion first. Oh, you need the motion? I can't even ask her a question. That's a second. <laughs> I'll make a motion. A second? I'll Okay, then please. Um, so, once it's all, do we think our bid is or our budget is still close? It's going to depend upon this engineering analysis. Uh, we did not have access to any of the videos originally. They became accessible um, mid fall. So now that we have those, um, we can make some more engineering analysis. But we need the finished part of that. There was an engineering analysis that was supposed to be done with those videos, and we don't have that, and the city doesn't have that. So we're waiting for them to acquire that from the company that did the videos. Once we get that, um, we should be able to tighten up a lot of portions of the bid, um, and then also maybe even propose a different type of solution to repair the pipe um, that is less expensive than what was originally in. Um, because we had to go with the the type of um, I'm going to call it slip lining for a better term because I'm not an engineer. Um, we had to go with the the best option with the knowledge we had. Um, there could be less expensive options if we know that a pipe may not need a full full slip line. <coughs> yeah, three line. Three line. So um, and with that in play, this will actually, um, especially with some of the larger pipes, we may actually be able to do some concrete work that will be much less expensive. Um, so that's what we are uh, looking for. Okay. Um, just, just to clarify, cost sites. Mm -hmm. uh, so the engineering study that was previously done was not complete. <laughs> are, is that under not us. Our guidance no, or the city's? No, that's the city. So the city is the city's paying required for to video the pipes every so many years. And this was done, I, I think it was towards the beginning of last year, but one of the pieces is missing. So, you know, we got a hold of the videos for the consultants, the contractors to look at, but that engineering analysis uh, is missing. So we need to, to get that so we can uh, tighten up our bid so that we can have a bid that's much closer to what we originally thought. So. Perfect. I think just lesson learned as we move forward, right? you know. Yeah. 
we weren't even aware at the time that the videos were available. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's working. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would second the motion to reject uh, the bid that was received. All for say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. 5.6, Forrest. Proposal from the Clearbound. Morning, Forrest. Uh, so this item is a uh, clear ballot proposal for on-site election day support for the primary and for the November election this year. So this is to have uh, uh, a clear ballot field engineer on site. These are subject matter experts who know the voting system top to bottom. Uh, they're there to provide immediate on-site expert advice on anything that might come up that's voting system related. It could be calls from poll workers during the day out at the precincts. It could be election results reporting at the end of the night when we have to get data out of the system and send it to the state. So they're there as a, an immediate on-site resource and they've been invaluable to us in the past. So okay. Um, I and this is a 2024 budget, right? Yes. Okay, can I motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, so carry it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. <clears throat> 5.7, Jenny, uh, Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation. Good morning, Jenny. Hi, good morning, Commissioners. This is acceptance of, it's actually a $100,000 DCNR grant. Um, we had applied last spring for a grant to update the County Comprehensive Recreation Parks Open Space and Greenways Plan. The entire project is $200,000. Our plan was last updated in, or completed in 2008, so it's been a while. Um, and it will help identify and prioritize recreation projects and green waste throughout the county. There'll be a lot of um, public involvement and outreach to municipalities as part of this plan update. Okay, motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. And uh, for our new commissioners, this is another example of our planning department, our hard work. In this case, uh, Jenny bringing in money resources to the county uh, to bring in projects and further uh, and the county, make the county much better. So we want to appreciate your work, recognize it, and shame your entire department, the money they bring in through grants, <coughs> and, and in my department working with uh, hand in hand to get those grants approved and processed. We've got a great crew. We do. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, it's really, you know, grant monies, and, and obviously for us as taxpayers, it's it's all our money, but it's, it's a wonderful thing when we can get some county money that comes from the state or the federal government. So, all that work is greatly uh, appreciated. And if it, does, if it doesn't come here, it's going to go someplace. Right, else. absolutely. It's it's not like it's it's money that's going to not go somewhere. So, mm -hmm. the more we can get, and the, and the better we are as grant writers, and obviously Shannon's got a team that's doing a great job with that, is greatly appreciated because there's a lot of counties that, or a lot of communities in general that don't write grants well and they don't get that money. So it's, it's great that we, we have that ability here. And the department heads and elected officials, you know, bring it to their attention. You know, we just, we just review one with the coroner's office. And, right. uh, and the timeline, a very short timeline. And a lot of hard work went into it. And uh, to get it, get it submitted and that gives us the opportunity to hopefully receive these. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, all fair say aye. 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 So carry. Thank you. Thank you. 5.8, uh, Leslie, the Great Lakes Avoidance Train. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Um, seeking your approval um, for an amendment to our windstream contract that we have currently today. Basically, this contract's just going to um, up what we have for internet speeds. We have 100 meg today. We're going to go to a one gig um, internet. Um, tunnel, if you will. Um, this will just um, go to the end of our contract, which is the end of 26. This is a budgeted item. Um, this will be um, both for Department of Public Safety and for the courthouse at 24, um, $24.52 a month. And um, as I stated, it is in the budget for this year. Okay. Okay, motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Commissioners, if you remember, this is uh, our first step into moving towards uh, Wi-Fi in different facilities. Yeah. 
be nice to have it in the courtrooms. Oh, sure. I think it's one of the few courthouses that don't have it in their courtrooms. And we're talking, I think we're going to do courtroom one. We're definitely doing courtroom one with Wi Fi, and I believe two, but don't quote me on that one. Definitely courtroom one. Great. Yep. We have two courtrooms that is uh, test beds to get this up and running. Good. Yeah. And the courts are, uh, are very pleased about that news. Commissioner Thomas, anything? Want to go first? Or? No, I have not. You have not. Um, I don't have anything important other than um, obviously Monday is uh, Martin Luther King Day, and the uh, just from a historical tidbit, if uh, you know the "I Have a Dream" speech is, is one of the most famous speeches in American history, and if you uh, if you read about it or you research it, um, in his in the written speech that he had in front of him, the phrase, I have a dream, does not appear. Um, he had used it in, a, in speeches before, and it didn't have the, the uh, impact that he thought it would have. So when you, if you listen to it, it's about 13 minutes long, I, I would encourage people to listen to it. At the beginning, um, remember, he was Dr. Martin Luther King, he was a PhD, he was a very intelligent guy. Um, and, um, but he was also an uh, ordained minister. And when you listen to the beginning of the speech, it was very, um, wordy, it was very uh, intellectual, and um, and it was very, it, it, the response just wasn't there. And about probably eight minutes into it, he went off script and he started with the I have a dream and he kind of transferred from, you know, intellectual to Baptist preacher right in the middle of his speech. And the last four or five minutes is totally ad-libbed. And the I have a dream part was, was totally, it was not written down anywhere. So. Um, I would encourage people to listen to it um, because there were there were many other segments of the speech that were that were repetitive and um, we cannot be satisfied he said over and over there were many there were other segments that were repetitive but the I have a dream part is the one that stuck and that's how it's been. but for uh, oh you know over the weekend to remember you know where we were and where we've come from but um, it's just, I've always found it interesting that the most famous part of one of the most famous speeches in American history was not written, that he just kind of wung it as he got going. So uh, if you want to check that out over the weekend, you can YouTube it and you can find it in a lot of places. Okay. And as mentioned earlier, we're, we're very excited about having uh, airline service back to the airport beginning in May. Um, it is a first step. We ask the public to uh, to utilize it, be supportive of it. Uh, it's like anything, if you don't use it, it's gonna go away. We have a chance to, to grow with it and expand on it and, and show them that the service is truly needed in Central PA, as we all know that. Um, so we ask you to be positive in your comments and uh, please be supportive as, as there's been a lot of people that worked diligently on this to get us uh, back in the game and uh, Rural airports are very, very tough um, environment right now, and uh, very competitive what's, what's out there. Um, we bring a lot of, of good things. Uh, we have free parking down there. At the same time, the extra bags will not be charged. Uh, the three airlines, I believe it was United, um, Alaska Airways, and uh, American. It's one ticket to go straight through which is nice, um, so it's very convenient, and, and Dulles is one of the greatest hubs that we could ask for down in Washington, because you can go anywhere in the world from there. So we're excited about this and continue to work with them and, and, uh, as, as things expand down there. Also last Thursday, Senator Casey, uh, he visited Lycoming County to discuss the levy and federal funding associated with the repairs and the upgrades. Um, Commissioners at that time were in session. At the time of his visit, it was our first public meeting. Therefore, we were unable to attend. However, our planning department was there. Um, we want to make a statement regarding the importance of completing the levy project for the safety and economic health for the county. First, we want to thank Senator Casey for visiting the levy and his commitment to work with the county and the city to provide continuing funds um, to ultimately get the levy accredited and recertified. However, we also want to thank the former Congressman Fred Keller 
who initially included $8 million through the House Houses Community Project funding process, otherwise known as the earmark process. In the fiscal year 2023, the appropriations bill that funded Homeland Security. As many of you know, the Congressman has a history of opposing earmarks. But in this case, the levy, a safety concern, he agreed to use the earmark process for the levy. It's also important to mention that he used his entire earmark allocation for this levy project. He loves the people like Cumming County. He made it known that they deserve this and he was going to utilize all his resources to get this through. Finally, I'd also like to thank the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for its work thus far in assisting the county and the city in determining exactly what parts of the levy are priorities. As many of you know, we've had some delays, starts and stops with the Army Corps process, which has been frustrating, but we thought the time is now to move the process forward and get this done, which can only be done with the Army Corps leading it and frequently coordinated with the FEMA and FEMA. Also, our planning department has spent countless hours, hundreds if not thousands of hours in this process and many thanks to them. The Greater Williamsport Levy is a source that protects some four and a half billion dollars in community assets, including residences, businesses, schools, medical facilities, etc. And the county has worked hard and long to take the necessary steps regionally and in Washington, D.C. to ensure the levy is the number one priority for our community. Its repair and upgrade will be the source of protection for our community <coughs> resulting in economic vitality for the region for years to come. The county is going to be continuing to work with the partners, the federal, the state, and local levels to ensure that get this, this work gets done. The county is completely committed to this project. We have been from day one. Many have said we've taken a lead on it. I believe we have. And without it, I believe the levy would be decertified at this point. So hats off to the team as we continue to move forward with this. And as we work together, we'll get this done. Thank you. Do you have any? No, thank you. Okay. Um, any public comments? Any from the audience? Yes, Mr. Stell. And again, we ask comments to be brief and for county issues. Thank you. Uh, yes, Larry Stell from Montgomery. I, I don't want to, uh, our new uh, Commissioner, Ms. 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 Messina, I, I want to uh, maybe clarify a little bit more about the, the speech itself because I used to teach public uh, speaking and I used that uh, speech actually is how to give a speech and because it is absolutely well designed. The backstory is that he wasn't even invited to that. They, they, they wanted because he was he was the most uh, recognizable um, person in the, in the movement, but and the other guys were kind of a, of a little bit intimidated. Like, gee, we want to we want our moment in the sun, and so they decided, well, we'll just stick him on the tail end. And so by this time, it was hours that the thing had gone on. It was super hot. Everybody's tired. Everybody's sweating like crazy. He gets up there. And behind him was the Lincoln Memorial. And so he, his, his initial statement, based on the Gettysburg Address, he says, I wrote it down here because I had to look it up. He made me think about this, Mark, because I got thinking how, how beautiful this is. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. That was the first sentence. So he's echoing four score and seven years ago, but it was a hundred years. It was eight, uh, 1963, which was 1863 is when it was uh, the Emancipation Pro Proclamation. So suddenly he has them. It, it was. It was, and it, they told him only had ten minutes. So I think it was twelve. He was close. It, yeah, he was close. But you could tell that they were they were 
captivated. They're like, this guy is really speaking to our hearts. And he's, he and you're right, his speech ended. And behind him was Mahalia Jackson. And I met somebody, by the way, who was in that crowd and confirmed this, because I heard this. And I said, I heard a story. And they know that's true. Mahalia Jackson said, Malcolm, tell him about the, the dream. Tell him about the dream. Because that was sort of a, uh, what do you want to call it, a, a stump speech that he used again and again all the time. You're right, as a pastor. If you've ever been to a black church, they, you know, somebody say amen. You know, they just, they get so excited and it's, it's wonderful to be in those kind of churches. But he, he did that. He, he began the, the, the dream speech, which was all, you know, impromptu. And that's what we all, now, and the thing is called, I dream, I, I, I you know, the dream speech, but actually it really wasn't. But you're right, it captured of uh, the spirit of America and, and as I have uh, you know traveled the world and and uh, talked on on public speaking a lot that's one speech that I can say this one is one that's universal one that everyone can learn from and and gather something from so I, I just want to confirm everyone should should it it takes you one second to find it on on uh, on on the web you know, you can read it in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and 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 it, it speaks to what we really are as a country and what we ought to remember. So, do you know, before you run away, do you know the, they, how they found this speech? No. George, George Raveling, is, uh, no, he was a college that. basketball coach. He, I think he's in the college basketball, or the basketball hall of fame. He was a student, he was a player, I, I want to say Villanova. He, so he was a college kid. Wow. And um, they traveled. He was close enough on the East Coast, so it might not have been Villanova. But it was close enough that they he wanted to travel there. And um, so then he gets there, and he's six six or six seven. And and um, so while he's there, someone said to him, "Will you help do be security on stage just in case?" Huh. So he's you know twenty one years old, and he's like, "Yeah, sure, I don't care." And he says, "So after it's over, after the speech is over, he's on stage, and he said, Dr. King walked past him." And he just handed him his notes, and he said, "Here, kid, you want this?" So he didn't know any. So he folded it up, and he said he had a book with him because one of his favorite books, because it, he knew it was going to be a long day. So he folded it up and shoved it in his book. And then as years went by, it was like 20 years later, and I think he said he was talking to his mother or something. You, I just read this story this year, and he said, "You know, it's fun. I think I have that somewhere." <laughs> so he went through his personal library and started looking wow. through books. And he found it, wow. and so now it's it's on loan. It's in some college somewhere. He I think he owns it, but he loaned it to. It's in a museum or a college or somewhere. But it was a, and it was. It's not just some nobody. Like he's a guy in the in the basketball hall of fame. It's wow. a neat story. That's a great story. That's a great story. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other public comments? I gotta tell you, I go to a lot of commissioners' meetings, and this one by far has been the most interesting and informative that I've been to in a long time. So, thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is James you May. We set the bar too high. Then. Uh, yeah, 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 this is great. Yeah, yeah. Very, very informative. Uh, my name is James May, and I am the regional director for Congressman Dan Muser. And uh, with this being the kickoff to 2024, I'm trying to get around to all of the commissioners' meetings um, to let everybody know that we are here for you. But when I say that to Lycoming County, I mean literally because we are here, like right upstairs for you guys, right on the fourth floor. Um, I, I know that you mentioned this in your opening prayer and in your comments, but um, it was one year ago this month that Dan called and asked if I would be willing to transition from, I was working at the state treasury and coming over to the federal side. And when he did, we sat down and talked about his priorities for this area. And he told me two things. He said he's focused on the, the levy and focused on trying to get uh, commercial air service restored uh, to the airport here. And so um, there's been a lot of developments on those. Um, just wanted to let you know, I mean, in texting uh, back and forth with DC as we're sitting here. Um, obviously we're making progress, but I assure you that he is continuing to uh, fight to get the essential air service restored as well so that we can continue that growth. And uh, I know that right now there's some community funded, he's spoken with you already about these, some community funded projects uh, that we're working on. And um, we want to echo as well what you said about Fred Keller and, the, and thank him for the work that he did uh, before Dan came on board. And so uh, we're here to continue that work and um, just want to introduce myself to the 
the new folks I've met uh, most of you already and uh, I do have cards and again we are upstairs if you ever need anything from the federal side we are definitely here to partner with you guys here in, in Lycoming County. Thank you. James. In the two trips that I've been out, the opportunity to uh, visit down DC regarding the airport levy, most recent being in December with the director and, and uh, Shannon Rossman of the Planning Department, our director there, um, Dan graciously had us over to his office. We spoke about the airport, you know, the work he's put into this, the levy, the airport. He has, you know, he says, I've been to probably a dozen different meetings hearings on it. Uh, he introduces to one of his staffers that he, yes. has, he goes, this is Joe from Scranton. He joked around, this is the real Joe from Scranton. <laughs> and and uh, he says, he's one of my staffers that I've specifically assigned to the airport to work on it. Just that. And uh, so his dedication to, the, to that, and now we're starting to see results. We want to thank him for his service. It, it honestly has been, I, I, I can probably say his top priority. I mean, at, at, at minimum, one of his absolute top priorities from the very beginning. And um, just about, we have a staff call every Monday morning, and it comes up 95% of the time of discussing it. I know that for Dan, it's been a top priority as well. So, And what you said is very, very true. I'll say it out this way. Make sure that we now utilize this, because as we fight to, uh, to, to help increase the, you know, get the essential air service and get more flights coming in, <clears throat> They're going to start looking and saying, you know, what are you doing with what you've been given already? Um, sort of like the talents in the Bible. You know, what have you been given? What are you doing with those? And so please utilize the airport uh, as much as you can. And as they emphasized on Monday, this service has been down Lancaster, uh, the same airline service, and it's been very successful in the Lancaster area. And, uh, they, they, you know, and then to hear the gentleman say this, this terminal will be his nicest facility yes. to bring in. Service it's, a, it's a beautiful terminal. Yeah, for yeah, him to absolutely. say that, that he, you know, he was he was boasting how beautiful the airport was yeah. here, and he's really enjoying that uh, to bring the planes here uh, for that. So, um, you know, the service is also out in Dubois. I believe they train pilots out there also, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, we're excited about that because we have shortage of pilots, and that's addressing that issue also. Yeah. Good. So, and thank you um, on behalf of thank Congressman Muser. Just want to say thank you and. Anything you need from the federal side, we're here to assist. Jim? I just wanted to add on to what uh, Mr. Mayo had said. Um, many of you know Mark Borowski. He, works, he's, he worked for the county for a long time as our senior transportation planner. Um, and as some of you may know, the planning department is the home of the MPO, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization where we do, we do a lot of the work with all the transportation projects and we work with PennDOT and the federal government. Um, one of the things that uh, Mark, who now works, is a part-time employee since he, he physically retired from the county, um, one of the things that he works on is aviation. Um, he's on the state TAC board, the Transportation Advisory Commission, I think it's called, and he's like, he's the vice chair. He's also on the aviation um, committee and he helped develop uh, and push for the state to do a statewide uh, aviation study, which had never been done before, which got all the airports together to, to put their input into what can we do, what are the issues, and what we can, do, can we do to help solve some of these issues. Because a lot of other states have that already, and they work together, and that's something that Penn State did not have. Um, so they're in the process of doing that. and. Also, by doing that study and being involved in the state committees, uh, he was appointed by the, the governor at the time to that, that TAC committee and also the uh, subcommittee on aviation. By doing that, we were able to uh, get the state aviation uh, conference for the fall of this year uh, without even having an air service to an airport, you know, that, that was trying to get air, or air service because we wanted to, we really pushed for that because we wanted to promote the idea that we are a great place to have air service to. So um, he's been working very diligently on that and we really appreciate the fact that he wanted to stay on part time. Um, so he's one of those, you know, Commissioner Sherman, he's one of those part time employees that's helped us out a lot with very individual and high level projects because of, of his knowledge and previous knowledge on those subjects. Mark's been a tremendous asset for his 30 plus years with the county and to his state work. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Frank Pellegrino called me, um, the airport uh, authority chairman, he had he had asked uh, for statements to be made by the commissioners. And 
ask if I would speak, and I called him back and said, would you mind having Mark Morowski speak too, because of what he's done for transportation mm -hmm. and with the airport, um, aviation. I mean, he's been involved in the bridge bundling program. He's been a tremendous asset. We can't take Mark enough. Right. Yeah, and he's been a great um, knowledge, wealth of knowledge yeah. for previous projects. I mean, he was around since... 86. Yeah, I was going to say mid-80s. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's been around a long time. You know, our, our current transportation staff and supervisor, uh, Scott Williams, does a wonderful job, but just having that that background knowledge, and he were able to focus his work, Mark's work, on items that he's involved with on the state committee because it's it's very honoring to have somebody on the state tax committee in our office. So it's we can funnel things up, and and that's really helpful. And not you know everybody has a governor appointee to the tax committee, so yeah, that's been very helpful. Scott's been around a long time too. That's how <laughs> <he knows. laughs> uh, I graduated. High school in '87, so Mark's been around a little longer than me too. He graduated long before that. <laughs> Not long before that. <laughs> but but I just wanted to mention that you know we are going to have the state aviation conference come this fall, and that will be something we'll we'll make sure you're all aware of. And our MPO is very excited to have that yeah, here. Be a great event to be able to host it. Yeah, and the, the airport, the chamber. Um, are sponsoring it. I have, we have uh, Penn College is, is, is and um, Avco, um, Textron is very involved in that also. So we're really excited about that. And we're going to be able to highlight a lot of the good things that are in the area. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment? Yes, Mr. Adams. Morning. Morning, Commissioner. It's Tom Adams, Williamsport. Uh, Psalm 119, 171 says, Let my lips utter, lips utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. And that's, um, I think, one of Martin Luther King's whole drive for America to see it, to see it stay on um, the course of governance through the statutes of, of what we find in the Bible. You know, because the Bible is a law book. And it's uh, first and foremost that. And he wasn't, and it's funny, 1963 is, a, you know, we removed prayer and Bible reading, 62 and 63, and 63 he gives a speech. And now what's happened, I think, one of those things that happened, it's just kind of occurred to me, is that because, maybe because of that, because of those pillars and groundings for, for our country, for our education, were taken out. And there's, in those years, uh, we have people now using this era of the civil rights as a dividing point. It wasn't meant for that. It was meant to bring us together as a country. And that was his whole whole mission. And uh, so we, it's really important um, for us to realize that when we don't know our history, and when uh, Mr. Meigs mentioned that, uh, you know, one of the most informative, it, Maybe it would be a good idea. We have tidbits of history because when we don't know our history, we can be led around by things that, that just aren't true, and it doesn't give you the uh, fortitude to stand against the lies. So when, when we do have a full knowledge of our history, it it'll embolden you to say, "No, that's not right. It's, this is true." And when you when you people, most a lot of people want to stand on what's true. No one wants to really be wrong and proven wrong. So, and and it helps fortify our, our local governance too so we know where to stand when, when uh, trials come. And just one mention that something that's being pushed by uh, United Nations uh, World Health Organization, there's a big drive in Washington you may be aware of. Uh, they want to take over all sovereignty of every country in the world when it comes to health emergencies, what they all claim is an emergency, something such as COVID, they want to come in and shut things down and tell people how they can live, what they have to do, what they can't do. Um, of course, my personal thing on that is they come, I, you know, I'll just talk term for myself, but we need to stand as a nation to say no to it. Um, and I, there's a public comment period going on until now to the 18th, they extended that. And this has been ongoing, continually bring this up over the past few years to, to push this. So I thought I'd uh, at least mention that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else from the audience? Hearing anybody online? 
Yeah, JD. Uh, JD Digger. Seems to me that over that over the last four or five years, the county has had a tremendous problem with HR employees to pay a current employee who's leaving forty dollars an hour part time. To me, makes no sense at all. I think it's time that the commissioners get that department under control. Our agenda, so um, meeting will be adjourned. Our next meeting will be um, Thursday, January the 18th at uh, 10 a.m. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Very good comments. <laughs> I will do so. I'm sitting there and thinking, oh my God. I'll do it. Deal.